Hello everyone and welcome back to the third episode of how to make game with Python and Pygame series. In this video we will do a lot of polishing with colors since we want our game to be more attractive. We will also learn about collisions and how to implement those with Pygame. If you skip the first two episodes where I showed you how to create a really simple player and moving enemies, make sure to check those out first. Before we start I gotta remind you to press that subscribe button. And if you like the content I'm posting here and wanna be notified every time I post more amazing videos, you know which bell to press. I'll be really happy if you smash that like button as well. Now let's dive into the interesting part. In previous two videos we mostly just wrote a lot of code and almost nothing really changed from the blank screen in the beginning. Today we will try to change that by adding some colors, graphics and even some score measurement system towards the end of the video. So stay tuned. First we will change the color of background, since in the original game is not black. For this you can use extension that I presented in my video about top extensions for web developers, the color picker. I will just search for world's hardest game in Google Images and fetch the color of the background. To change background of our game we have to edit screen.fill function. Let's apply the values that we fetch from the image. If you run our game now you can see it's much nicer to look at, which is really important when you want players to keep playing your game. Now we will try to change our existing player and enemies to match the ones in the original game. As you can see we are missing the black border on both and the color of enemy should be blue. So let's quickly change that. The easiest way to apply border to our enemy and player is to draw a little bit bigger rectangle and circle before drawing the actual ones. So basically we will have two rectangles and two circles sitting on each other which will make the illusion of a border. In player draw function we will copy code for drawing the rectangle and paste it right above and then change the color from red to black. Black color in RGB system is when all values are set to zero. We will also add 4 pixels to width and height, since our border square should be bigger than the original one. Now we will run our game. As you can see we have a problem that our border is not aligned with original player. To fix that you can play around with subtracting values of x and y of border rectangle. I will subtract 2 from both x and y value. Now let's check if that fixes our problem. Yep, our player now has a nice black border. The same thing we will apply to our enemy, but here we have to change its color first. Since we want it to be blue, we will just set the last value to 255, and other two will be set to 0. We can delete color as argument on enemy object, since we set it as default in constructor. For border we can do the same as we did with the player. Copy the original code for drawing circle, change color to black, and increase width and height value. Let's test it out. As you can see our game is getting really similar to the original one. Even though our game is much prettier now, it's still no fun to play since our enemies can't really hurt us. To implement interaction between player and enemies we have to check for active collision during the game. Basically we need to check each iteration the position of our player and position of our enemy, later more enemies. And if any of those enemies is touching our player we should restart the game or in our case we will just position the player to the start position. Luckily Pygame has a function for that exact functionality, it's called CollideList, which is a function that we call from our player and we pass it a list of enemies. The CollideList function has to be called from draw.rect function. If you remember our draw.rect function is inside our class player, so we have to return it from the player's draw function. 
And don't forget we have to do the same for the enemy. Now we can check for collision inside our update function in game.py and for now just print into console that collision is detected. So we will set condition if player.draw and then pass a screen and then dot collide list and then we have to pass a list of our enemies. So for now we have only one, so we will type enemy.draw and pass again a screen. Later on we will add more enemies. Then we have to check if the collide list function returns value that is not equal to minus one, since minus one is when collisions are not detected. So when we detect collision, we want to print collision detected to the console. As you can see, it works perfectly. Since we are returning the actual player rectangle, border is not counting as a collision, which is in my opinion just fine. Now that we know that we can detect collisions, we can reset our player's position whenever it collides with enemy. But first we have to add a function to class player, which will be called reset. And in the reset function, we will set self.x to 50 and self y to 50 as well, since this is the start position of our player. Now instead of printing out collision detected, we can call player.reset. Let's run our game. As you can see it works perfectly. Another nice feature that we are gonna also apply is printing death count. So basically the number of tries that took player to complete the game. We need some kind of counter that will increase each time player collides with enemies. We will add property deaths to player which will be set to zero as default. Inside our condition for collisions, we will be also increasing player's deaths count besides resetting its position. But we still need to find a way how to display that counter on our game screen. We have to display some kind of text. This is possible with Pygames fonts. First, we have to initialize font, which will be pygame.font.font .font, and as argument we will pass font's name and font size. In our draw function we will display that font. First, we have to render our text. Let's assign death counter equals font.render and we will pass the actual text that we want to display. So in quotation marks I will write deaths and then plus and we will convert player.deaths to string and then we also have to pass another argument which is true which is for anti-alias and the last one will be color of our text which will be white so 255 for all those three values. And last but not least, we have to actually display that text. So type screen.blit and we pass it the death counter and in tuple the position of displayed text. I will set it to 350. Let's run our game now and try to die with our player. As you can see, our counter works perfectly and we already have somewhat of a working game. Last thing that we will implement in this episode to make our game even more fun to play is more enemies. Since we were using object-oriented programming approaches, this will be a really easy feature to implement. All we need to do is just copy and paste our existing enemy. Rename it to 2, 3 and 4 and let's change boundaries where those enemies are allowed to move. You can set them to whatever you want, just keep in mind that you have to keep them inside in game screen. And we also have to copy enemy.move and enemy.draw function. Because we have more enemies now, we have to include them into collide list function, or else our collision checks won't affect new enemies.
Now let's run our game for the last time. As you can see, our game is now really similar to the level 1 of World's Hardest Game, which was actually our goal. So now you can have some fun with it, and actually you can also add some more enemies. Now our project finally looks like a real game. And I'm sure that you learned a lot in those 3 episodes, and you'll be learning a lot more in next ones. But since programming is all about practice, I encourage you to try implementing some features you want yourself. And anyway, we will be exploring a lot more features in next episodes, so don't forget to subscribe and stay tuned, and I'll see you guys next time.